Now, I'm sure most of you have heard about the whole Pelosi attack. I figured it Ed Bucked spoke for itself. But then come to find out we don't really know anything. And now I've got to look at Skeletor to see what in the hell is going on. So as we travel down this rabbit hole, hold your nose. First of all, I'm so sorry for all that's happened. How is your husband doing? What does his recovery look like? Well, thank you. Thank you for asking a new comment. He's doing okay. He is, uh, it's a long haul, and, but he knows. So the very first thing of thank you, thank you, and she's looking down, directly down, which is not the emotional side of the brain. So there's no emotion in it. Although she's portraying emotion, there isn't emotion there. He has to pace himself. He's, he's such a, a gentleman that he's not complaining, but he's also... Um, Uh, knowing that it's a long haul. He's so concerned about the traumatic effect on our children and our grandchildren. Uh, And we're concerned about the traumatic effect on him. But again, he's on a good path with excellent care from San Francisco General and his uh, healthcare providers. Has he been able to talk to you about what he was thinking? So watched her go through that spiel and it's um, really, there's nothing really there. There's not much in the commenting section. But the interesting part is the constant emphasis. And then when they pull back, you see the rest of the body that it's tight to itself, hands in lap, thumb petting itself, very, very still, very unnatural for a normal human being at this point. You would expect if your loved one had gone through something like this in the most innocent of ways, that someone broke into your house and then attacked your loved one with a hammer, you would expect to see a couple of emotions. Not all at once, and not necessarily in this order, and not necessarily separate. But things like fear, anger, a form of depression. And we don't see that. We see someone who's very dry, we're not accessing emotions, and they're smiling a lot. Which doesn't go with any of the emotions I just described to you. You could have someone who smiles a lot at that kind of situation because emotionally they're divorced from this person. Their marriage still may be intact, but they are no longer living or acting as a couple. When he woke up and found this person in in the room? We haven't quite had that conversation because any revisiting of it is really traumatizing. It was hard and one of the hardest things all week was to go back into the house for him. Uh, in the entrance, which is, of course, where, where the he was took place. hit. And, of course, upstairs in the bedroom where that person made his entrance, shall we say. Uh, but um, so we haven't, and the doctors have said, you know, any, we don't want him to watch the news. We don't want him to be revisiting a lot of this, at least not now, because mm-hmm. it will add to the trauma. And the, the operation was a success, but it's only one part of the recovery the traumatic to a a drastic head injury, it it takes some time. Have have you... So we see some really tight swallowing in that. Um, She's stumbling through her explanation. We already know that there's something wrong with Pelosi. We can chalk it up to alcohol or dementia or old age, but whatever it is, it has slowed down the mind. And so it stumbles a lot as it tries to move forward, especially when it's stressed about something been able to, to listen to the 911 call? No. I haven't been able to listen to that or the body cam, any of that, no. I imagine when it is in the public domain is when I will have a chance to see it. But even then, <clears throat> the physician... Do you want to hear it? <clears throat> I don't think so. I don't think so. But it, I don't know if I'll have to. I, don't, I just don't know. Yeah. That's all a matter <clears throat> on the legal side of things. Yeah. There are obviously a lot of details in, in, in the affidavit. So he talks about the body cam, the 911 call, you know, things of that nature. That's pretty much all the evidence. And she's telling, no, she hasn't seen it. And now we have a believe me look that is stuck on her face and it's stress. That doesn't necessarily mean she's being deceptive. Because I can tell you, I haven't seen any of that stuff, but I've heard what possibly is in there. And I don't want to say that. And technically, she's still being truthful. But you're going to see a lot more of the believe me look because it's a stressor. It could be she's completely stressed about the situation, but it doesn't jive with the previous statement of her talking about, you know, the trauma to this man's head and the things that he's had to go through. We didn't see it there, which would be a natural, oh, that is a stressor. That should be there. 
So to not see it in that instance and then to see it in this leads more to the thing of what, hmm, something's not quite vanilla in all this. David, but I mean, had he, had your husband not had the presence of mind to, to, to call 911 and be able to call 911, I mean, there's well, no telling what would have happened. He was cool. And Paul's cool. He was cool. He called and uh, with enough information, but not too much information because the guy was very threatening. He was very big. I don't know if you can see that at all. He's very big. Mm. 6'4", 260. So. The assailant. Hmm? The assailant. The assailant. And, and, and he was right there, you know, just like a few feet away from Paul, uh, hearing all of this. So he had to, uh, and he saved his life. Paul saved his own life with that call because that really gave enough information to go. But had the 911 operator not been, right. a, you know, figured it out. God bless her, yeah, for that. And then uh, took, it, uh, took it from one level of concern to another and therefore uh, the police came and that's what got the police there. Where were you when you? Well, that was a very weird expression the tight lipness and it goes right into the corners. The emotions that should be in this are not being displayed. At this point, everything is suspect. And because it's not appropriate in the way that it's being portrayed to the public, it should be looked at as suspicious. What we're going to be looking for in this series is the reality of it. Do we see appropriate emotions for all of this? Do we see a skeptic turning into a believer? Do we see liars do we see deception that is what we're looking for i tell you what i've never actually really believed in this whole alien thing but i tell you what after i watched this show started thinking about things a little bit differently that's crazy if you like it please share and subscribe thanks for watching